Today I'm going to show you a very beautiful and ancient mathematical proof. In fact, when Socrates saw this proof, he said, I believe knowledge of this has made me a finer human being. So that's exciting. <laughs> okay, today we're going to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. And the way we're going to do that is proof by contradiction. Now all that is, is you take the thing that you're going to prove. You assume that the opposite of it is true. You follow logically through the consequences until you come across a contradiction, which means your original assumption was incorrect. But remember, your original assumption was the opposite of the thing that you wanted to prove, so you're done, QED. <laughs> which is Latin for... We're done. <laughs> All right, let's get started, Rich. Yeah, when you say irrational, does that mean that it doesn't make any sense? <laughs> no, Rich, but, but good question. We need to start the journey. Rich, we say that a number is rational if you can write it as a fraction. That is a whole number divided by another whole number, Roy. How do two whole numbers end up making a fraction? Well, Roy, as you might remember from fourth grade, <laughs> that's how fractions are. It's a whole number in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so we're assuming that the square root of 2 is rational, so we write root 2 is equal to A over B, where A and B are, Susan. A and B are letters. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're variables that were, Stephanie? Overall, do you think Clinton was a good president? <laughs> Stephanie, we're not going to get in that argument again. Russell, hello. Hello. You mind if I... Uh... Please come in, come in. <laughs> Today we're proving the square root of two is irrational. Oh, the irrationals, huh? That gang of troublemakers. <laughs> okay, so we have square root of two is equal to A over B, where A and B are whole numbers. Now we can go ahead and assume that A and B have no factors in common, because we could have just factored those out. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by b to get rid of b in the denominator, and we get rich. Yeah, you're trying to get rid of b. Why are you multiplying? Why don't you just subtract? <laughs> <laughs> I'm multiplying because b is in the denominator, so to get rid of b, I have to do the opposite. Why do you want to get rid of b so bad? <laughs> I'm simplifying the equation. I'm not on a vendetta. Okay. So we have b root 2 is equal to a. Now let's square both sides of the equation to get rid of the square root. We have b squared times 2 is equal to a squared, which means a squared is even. Roy. Yeah, if b squared times 2 is equal to a squared, couldn't you just say a is greater than b and get partial credit? <laughs> that A is bigger than B because we know root 2 has to be bigger than 1, Principal Russell. I'm hearing a lot about A and B here, and I thought we were gunning for the square root of 2. We're not gunning for anything. Um, we're trying to prove a property. Hey, uh, do you know why Sylvia Plath killed herself? <laughs> Perhaps she felt that she couldn't get her point across. <laughs> yes, Rich. Yeah, squares have four sides. How come when you square something, you just do it two times? <laughs> When you calculate the area of a square, you multiply two sides times each other. You don't multiply a fourth side, Susan. A triangle has three sides. Yes, and A and B are letters. It's so good to have you here. <laughs> so, we have A squared is even. Principal Russell. I know, the square root of two is imaginary. No, uh, the square root of negative one is an imaginary number. The square root of two is a real number. It's simply irrational. Oh. <laughs> The internet. <laughs> Socrates, find a human being. Square root of two. Rich. Did Socrates have a first name? Yes, it was Joe. <laughs> Susan? Where does Socrates live? He's dead. They killed him for asking so many questions. Roy. Isn't there a button you can push on a calculator that'll do all this? <laughs> I realize you're eager to take your place in the American workforce so you can scan UPC codes all day or whatever else the future holds for you. Whatever else you do in life. You want that radio control car ship? <laughs> had a lot of cats and was impotent. You do the math. <laughs> Speaking of math, 
<laughs> we have that a squared is even. Now that means that a is even because if a were odd, then a squared would be odd. So we know a has a factor of two in it, which means a squared has a factor of four in it, which means we have two b squared. Oh, bullshit! Square root of two, man. <laughs> so we have two b squared is equal to four times something. So b squared is equal to two times something. So b squared is even. Roy. Are you making all this up? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, that, that's exactly what I'm doing. I, I, I came in here today and I said, what am I going to do for third period? Oh, I know. I'll screw with everybody's heads. <laughs> so if you're having a hard time following this, it's not because you're not paying attention or you're stupid. No. It's because I'm making this up. I'm just talking that crazy math gobbledygook. So you don't have to worry about learning anything today, and that's probably a big relief for you guys. Why don't you give yourselves a little nod, that little check-in thing you do, that nod thing? <laughs> you stop the learning train right in its tracks. Education is the only business where the consumer wants less for his money. <laughs> well, you know what, people? You got it today! Although we were damn close, because we had that b squared is even, which means that b is even, and we know that a is even, which means a and b share a factor of two, but we define them to have no factors in common, which is the contradiction. So we have, in fact, proven today that the square root of two is irrational. <laughs> This has really made us finer human beings. <laughs>